Miss Chow's third lecture of the energy unit. We have this lovely blossom of the magnolia, which is part of the magnolia tree. Radishes. Daisies. I wonder how these lovely plants, including parsley, and the beautiful narcissus. They also have a very fragrant smell. In the unit of energy, the third part is called the light-dependent reactions. It is the first of the two main steps to photosynthesis. In today's lesson, the objective is that students will understand the two steps to photosynthesis. More specifically, students need to know the steps in a light-dependent reaction, including the reactants and products. So let's go ahead and start with photosynthesis overview. We have six, in a balanced equation, we have six molecules of carbon dioxide with six molecules of water. These two combined with the energy provided by our sun will create one molecule of sugar, or you can call glucose, with the byproduct of photosynthesis of six molecules of oxygen. In photosynthesis, there are two main steps. First is light reactions. Second step is the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle will be discussed in the fourth part of this lecture series. In light reactions, there are the byproduct of oxygen being made. Water is put in with sunlight and oxygen is a byproduct. And also, the ATP and ADP just are also byproducts. The carbon dioxide is taken from the environment around it, going into the Calvin cycle. Once these go into the Calvin cycle, the Calvin cycle produces NADP using the NADPH's energy to create more ATP molecules by combining ADP in phosphorus and also the byproduct what they're going the product that they're going to use they are going to get out is going to be sugar so let's take a closer look at this lovely four leaf clover zooming in closer to the four leaf closer we are hoping to get a cross-sectional view of the leaf and that we are going to see plant cells. These plant cells are separated by the cell membrane and the cell wall. Within these plant cells, they have green organelles, on which we all call chloroplasts. Zooming in and looking at the chloroplasts, if you remember from last lecture, inside each chloroplast has liquid-like, cytoplasm-like liquid, which we will call the stroma, and stacks of thylakoids. And these thylakoids form grana. On the left hand side is a cartoon rendition and the right hand side is an electron microscope picture of an actual thylakoid. So let's take a closer look. This is where light dependent reactions happen. There are four steps to light dependent reactions and all of these happen within the chloroplast. Here we have the thylakoid and we have the stroma to situate that we are in a chloroplast, and a stack of thylakoids create the grana. Taking a closer look at the thylakoid and cross-sectional view, the thylakoid inside is called the thylakoid space, and what contains it is the thylakoid membrane. If we take a closer look where the dotted line is, we will take a zoom in look of where photosynthesis actually first occurs. The first step of photosynthesis happens in photosystem 2. In photosystem 2, the green area is your thylakoid space. Um, sometimes they are also called the thylakoid lumen. And then the white area is the stroma, right outside the thylakoid membrane. And then you can see the phospholipid bilayer of the thylakoid membrane. Embedded into it is an integral protein of the P680. Here, th this is where you have two molecules of water 
where it is split with the energy of the sun. And when it's split with the energy of the sun, eventually oxygen will diffuse out of the plant, being the byproduct. So here, two molecules of water combined with the energy will produce oxygen and four molecules of, prot of protons. Four molecules of hydrogen will help create a proton gradient later on in the fourth step of the light-dependent reaction. Also in doing so, when you split the molecule, it creates four uh, electron energies, and they will travel along carrier proteins represented by spheres. The electrons go along the electron transport chain, which will take us to the second step of electron transport. Any electron transport in the same area of thylakoid space in the thylakoid membrane, we have the thylakoid membrane, which is represented by the blue phospholipid bilayer, and then we have the thylakoid space, and then the stroma. The electrons gets pumped by carrier proteins and moved along. So the energy are actively transported across the membrane. Here you have hydrogen protons. So when the electrons travels along the carrier proteins, it will send protons up through into the thylakoid space. And this will continue creating a gradient. More and more of these protons will move in from the stroma, which will eventually be a low concentration of protons, into the thylakoid space, creating a high concentration of protons. This will create a gradient. The third step is called photosystem 1. In photosystem 1, we have the same setup, but this time the protein involved, the integral protein involved in helping light and energy will energize the electrons once more since it was expended previously. The electrons will energize and create, take NADP which is, does not have energy and make NADPH. Later on NADPH is used in the Calvin cycle to make glucose or sugar. So here NADP with the energy of the electrons will create NADPH. So let's go ahead and see this again. NADP with the protons in the stroma with the energy of the electrons will create NADPH. So four electrons that was used twice with two molecules NADPH will create two NADPs. We will have ATP synthesis. Here, the purple integral protein is ATP synthase. By now, we have a higher amount of proton gradient. By now, we have a higher concentration of protons in the thylakoid space, creating a concentration gradient. So these protons, while through facilitated diffusion, the molecules of protons will travel through the ATP synthase. When they travel through the ATP synthase, that energy expending will take ADP with molecule phosphate and create ATP. So for every molecule of protons going through, it will take ADP and travel back and create ATP. And this is how the four steps of light dependent reactions happen. Thank you for watching and we'll see you at the next lecture.